In the future, I want to do a project that needs a lot of analog video sources. So, going along with the analog theme of this channel as of late, I set out to buy a bunch. I also just wanted a bunch of analog cameras because the video out of them looks cool. Anyway, I didn't really need a portable camera, and I didn't want to deal with batteries. Then I remembered security cameras, and they check all the boxes. They're hardwired, some output analog video, and I'm sure they're cheap on Amazon. Well, yeah, these things are actually super cheap for a camera. I found a whole bunch of not only security cameras, but also backup cameras. They also use a standard NTSC video signal, which is awesome. I mean, let's not get too excited. We still need to test out the quality of it. So let's do it. All right, so here's the first camera we got. These are all gonna be very generic, like the six letter <laughs> brand names, but let's... Okay. And exactly what I was expecting. Look how small this is though, that's pretty cool. So it looks like there's actually a tiny little microphone there, which is cool. And then right here we have just the power uh, composite and then the audio. So right here I've got one of these voltage select power supplies and so it's set to nine volts. I'm actually gonna set it to five. We're gonna start out on five and work our way up because a lot of these are meant for higher voltages, but they all seem to work anywhere between like five and 20 volts. Okay, so right here is the composite and that's just going to the capture and then we'll hook up power here and so this is like you can choose the tip and plug it in no magic smoke okay nothing on the screen let's increase the voltage I'm not sure about the exact rating for this one so hopefully I don't blow it up okay here's nine still nothing hope I'm not just absolutely cooking it okay I want to try 12 oh shoot Okay, here's you're looking at the direct capture now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's a composite camera. There's good old audacity. Here's that analog captioning code. This is actually kind of cool. It's it's straight up like working, <laughs> and it's doing the full 60 interlaced. As you can see, if I wave my hand around, it actually looks pretty good. It's still 480, but there's you guys. Alright, so we'll test that more later. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this one's actually a rear view car camera, which is kind of exciting because they're small and they're they're also like 10 bucks. So I guess that's if you need to drill a hole in your car. And then it comes with some power wiring, which you would it says to just wire these directly to the brake lights, so the second you go in reverse, it kicks on. And here's the camera. So yeah, look how, this one's a little bigger, but obviously no audio, because you wouldn't need audio. And then your standard, there you go. So we're gonna just run this on 12 volts off the bat, because that's what your car should be at. The power supply also does 13 and a half volts, so we can go up there if we need. Let's plug in composite, and also I just noticed there's a little loop of wire here. Interesting, probably should read the manual on that. And these all have the same plug, so I'm going to assume they're all pretty much manufactured the same. Alright, let's plug it in. Instant on. And there you go. It's not as wide, but it's definitely doing the job. There's the same back there, and it's doing the 60 interlaced. The image looks a little darker, but that's fine. I'll do more tests later. This is more just uh, the unboxing part. Okay, next one. Some of these are advertised as CCDs and some of them are CMOS, so I'm wondering if the CMOS ones take longer to boot up. Next one is this mini camera and digital video camera. This one's for FPV drones more. I assume it's gonna be really tolerant to like the wrong voltage and stuff. So there's the wiring. There's the actual camera, look at that thing. That is cool. So this just goes on your drone. Then you have your region selector, so PAL or NTSC. And then look, five to 20 volts there, so it can take pretty much any voltage. And yeah, I'm actually gonna have to wire this one up a little bit because it's not just a composite out, but it's cool. Last one I've got today is another backup camera. So this one comes with screws, 
that same wiring plug. Very long composite cable, so that's nice. So you can run this up to your head unit. And the camera itself, which has LEDs and a mount, so that's kind of nice. You know the drill. Composite in. We're still at 12 volts. Look at that, it has a little LED light. I'd look away if you were epileptic. But uh, yeah, this is definitely not NTSC. This is PAL. It looks pretty bad on the actual capture. I don't think this is a multi-region capture device either. This is the Win TV 1265 that was in the other video. I'm gonna see if I can do a PAL option, but it has country select, so I'm gonna say United Kingdom composite PAL. Okay, that's cool. I didn't know this was a multi-region uh, device. So there was a little fiddling around with the capture card, but I was able to get it to record PAL video. Here's what that camera looks like, and since it's a backup camera, it even has the overlay for parking distance, which is kind of funny. Also, that drone camera unfortunately doesn't have the standard output connections, so I need to make a cable for that. Since it runs on 5 to 20 volts, I can just run it off of USB. And the video output is a standard composite signal too. So I got a few of these little wires and cut them up along with an RCA cable and a USB cable. Then I combined the ground of the USB and the ground of the composite together onto one pin then the center connector of the RCA cable to one pin, and the positive of the USB to another. After soldering, isolating, and heat shrinking, we have this cable. On one end is the three pins, and on the other is video and power. For some reason, I just didn't record me soldering this together. I thought I did, but I can't find the footage anywhere. Anyway, this can be plugged into the cable that came with the camera, and then into the back of the camera. And if you connect everything, it just fires right up. And now that everything's sorted out, let's compare the quality of all four. I'm gonna do a few tests in different lighting scenarios, and we'll start with the worst scenario. You know what, let's play a little game. I'll number them and try and guess which one's which. We'll see at the end. All right, here's camera one, and you can see it's not the best here. It's super soft and grainy, and honestly just looks like a really old point and shoot camera. I mean, it's fine, and this is indoors and not the best lighting, but still. Moving on to the next one, it's actually a lot better in my opinion. It's much more detailed and a lot less noisy. The only thing is, there's a lot more contrast, which means you lose some details in the really dark and really light areas. I didn't color grade any of these, by the way. This is raw out of the recorder. The next one is actually really good. It's still a wide enough image, but the colors and dynamic range is impressive. You keep a lot of the detail in the darker areas. The only thing is this rainbow noise all over. The last one is very obviously a dash cam. The image is pretty soft, but it's not all that noisy. And it could just be that it has LED lights built in, which is a bit of a spoiler. Okay, now if I turn on my studio light, the quality instantly gets better on all of them. Here's camera one, and the image is definitely still soft, but it cleaned up a bit, and the noise is significantly less. Camera two also looks really good and you can see more of the detail in the darker parts. Still pretty contrasty, but it actually doesn't look the worst. Camera 3, man, this looks so good. I feel like the camera just looks like an old camcorder. It looks more professional too. I don't know, the colors are more pleasant, it's not too noisy, just looks like a rock solid image. And camera 4, the dash cam. I forgot to mention the image is reversed on here too, which is probably helpful if you're using it in a car. Anyway, the picture is fine, but nothing to write home about. I think camera 3 kind of ruined it for us. Alright, and here's the most interesting one, the outdoor test. I like it because you can test the colors really well and the dynamic range. And camera 1 does it pretty well, actually. I would say the colors are pretty good on it, and it has good dynamic range, except for the part where the petals are a little blown out, but you can actually see the bark at the bottom. I don't really know how to feel about camera 2, though. You can tell it's definitely got a wider field of view, and the colors are pretty good. But it's definitely blown out where the petals are, and even on the concrete now, and the darker area kind of lost a lot of detail. Camera 3 is the usual chef's kiss. Look at how much detail is in the dark parts, but the light parts aren't super washed out either, and the colors look very natural, especially that sky. I'm really happy with the image that comes out of this. And good old camera 4, it's still really soft, but the dynamic range is fairly good, especially with the darker parts. 
All right, time to reveal the cameras. Camera one wasn't as wide of an image, but did okay, and that's the circular backup camera, the one with the drill bit included. I think as a backup camera for a car, it does just fine though. Camera two, which was the widest lens but had the most contrast, was the right angle security camera. It also has a microphone, which sounds like this, and is marketed as a hidden camera. I don't know, it's a little unsettling, but whatever. Camera 3, in my opinion, is the best one for dynamic range, color, etc. And that's the drone camera. I wasn't expecting it to be this good. Definitely blew me away. Last but not least, camera 4 was the PAL backup camera. Its image is meh, but it has lights. Oh, and for that outdoor test, all of the cameras had the video running through a 100 foot long cable. That's an insane distance. And you can't even really tell. This cable wasn't even properly shielded or anything. I made this myself out of a long Cat 6 cable. I cut it up and put two composite jacks on either end so I could run camera and audio at the same time, or even two cameras. And that's why analog is kind of cool, because you can have it run over a really long distance and you might get a little interference, but it still works. Well, that's about all I've got here. Thanks for sticking around and watching me compare these little cameras. For about $10 each, I was kind of surprised by them especially the drone one. I'll put links in the description to the one I got, but I'm sure they're all pretty similar. Anyway, hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.